Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Real Clear Politics Takeaway for Thursday, August 26th. I'm Tom Bevan, co-founder and president of RCP. And I'm Carl Cannon, Washington Bureau Chief. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Carl. Let's talk about uh, a subject that is near and dear to my heart, which is the kids are going back to school. Our guys had uh, their first day uh, on Wednesday, so yesterday. Uh, but kids across all across the nation are going back to school. They either already started last week, they're starting this week, or or some of them are actually going to be starting next week. Um, <clears throat> it's a glorious thing, Carl, for parents that have to have their kids back in school full time, even if, as is the case with our kids, they are required to be fully masked um, all day long, and also with you know some various social distancing protocols worked in there. But nevertheless. In school instruction, I think this was a question mark for a lot of parents, whether this was going to happen or not, Um, but it is happening. Well, Tom, between you, me, uh, your co-founder of Real Clear Politics, John McIntyre, and Andrew Walworth, the producer of this show, uh, we, and if you, you got to include grandchildren in there, but we pretty much have kids between every age, between one and 21, the, the four of us, and I don't, I think and all of those kids need to be back in school, aren't eager to be back in school. Um, what's happened, though, in this area has happened in every area, even before the pandemic. It's how people feel about it and what the rules are, are broken along partisan lines. Um, and masks, whether to require children to wear masks, is the new fault line in American politics. Uh, our governor, J.B. Pritzker, is set to announce a mask mandate for in uh, indoors for everyone who's two and up and a, ma- a vaccine mandate for all educators. But uh, we've seen down in Florida, the mask uh, mandates where the governor there, Ron DeSantis, has has banned mask mandates. But apparently their local school districts, about half of them, I think, from what I've read, have have defied him and put those in place anyway. Um, as you mentioned, Carl, this has become sort of a, a, a partisan issue, although I'm not sure it breaks down that I'm not that might be a little bit too simplistic because um, I know plenty of plenty of parents who who think uh, that their kids should be going to school unmasked because um, and that it's it's, you know, not not necessarily harmful or cruel, but unnecessary for kids who are still at a very low risk of contracting COVID or even the Delta variant. Um, you know, they can't see their teachers faces. They can't catch on to social clues. I mean, that's part of what kids, you know, that's part of the experience of of being in school, especially when you're younger. Well, that's right. And, you know, adults understand that this won't last forever. I mean, nobody thinks ma- masked teachers is the ideal learning environment. Nobody would say that. But the, the idea here is that we won't have to do this forever. Um, although, you know, Tom, if you're a kid, I mean, two weeks seems like forever, let alone two years. So I, I you know, this is a problem. But the Delta variant's a problem, and we haven't gotten, we haven't, it hasn't burned itself out yet, and we haven't gotten top of it yet. Do you think, Carl, and this is the question that's on the mind of most parents I talk to, do you think that we will be in a situation, whether it's just in certain states or, or eventually, you know, all across the country, where we will be back to a hybrid learning situation where the kids are going to have to be stuck back at home and going online? Or do you think we're we're sort of past that in the same way we feel like we're sort of past locking down businesses and ruining people's livelihoods over, over this disease? Um, that seems now like something that we, we did that. We understand how harmful it was. Now we know more about the, the disease. Um, what do you think? Are we are we going to go back to a situation where the kids are back at home and and learning online? Well, nobody- Can you foresee that? Nobody wants that. I can foresee it, but only, you know, the nightmare scenario, Tom, has always been, uh, you know, the Delta variant is much more communicable than the original variant strain of this virus that came out of Wuhan. And whether it came from a lab or a jungle somewhere, I mean, we may never know. But the doomsday scenario has always been a virus that's as- communicable as the Delta variant, as deadly as, you know, something like Ebola. And if we come to that, look, all bets are off. I mean, that's, I think the entire world health community is holding its breath that Delta is as bad as it gets. I don't know that that's true, but if it, if that is true, 
this will burn itself out the way it did in India. And although it looks like we will now have to live with coronaviruses, you know, forever uh, among human beings, we, I don't think if this is as bad as it gets, we won't go back to the, the digital learning. That just, that was not good for any of these kids. You know, school is a socialization mechanism in our society as well as an educational tool. And, you know, kids need other kids. Uh, as as parents, we know this. And the other thing is that the the people who need it, who need learning the most, the people we're getting behind, we're getting further behind. Um, and I and nobody wants that. The teachers unions responded to this uncertainly, uh, but they have now kind of got around this idea. They're not fighting vaccination requirements. That you know, they're the teachers unions have got with the program. The parents know they want their kids back in school, and Lord knows the kids want to be in school. So I'm thinking we've turned the corner, but you know that's a very fingers crossed. You mentioned, and and we'll have to wrap it up after this, Carl. But you mentioned the Delta variant being more communicable, but not necessarily more lethal. Um, and then there's there's the Lambda variant I've heard that's out there, right? I guess the question is, Carl. You know, when we when we look around the world, even in places like Australia, where they're now building these sort of quarantine camps, and New Zealand, where they're you know they've basically locked the country down, telling neighbors not to even go outside or talk to each other. Um, there seems to be this this idea that we have to get to to zero cases that we're still in a, we're still in a situation where you know we're putting measures in place we cannot tolerate any uh any amount of these cases right the idea is is we're trying to get them uh you know wiped out is that will that mindset ever change because if that's the mindset carl there will always be a variant there will always be something that uh you know will have people sounding the alarm it seems like we've we've taken a step here with the initial reaction to covid that has transformed our ability to sort of you know reason and 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 produce sort of risk reward analyses about, you know, public health and, and freedom and, you know, livelihoods and, you know, economy, all of those things. Um, is that gone for good? Are we ever going to, are we going to get that back at some point? Well, you know, Tom, people have been selective about this all along. When um, people were protesting police uh, brutality last summer, these Black Lives Matter protests, thousands of people, many of them unmasked, we were told, oh, but this is a larger good. You look you look at the, the, these scenes from Afghanistan, which we'll talk about on tomorrow's podcast at some length, these thousands of people crowded, you know, in, in places not wearing masks, they're trying to evacuate, they're trying to save their lives. So there's always been, throughout this pandemic, people have put aside you know, health concerns if they had other concerns. And I think as human beings, we'll have to we'll have to collectively do that in time. But what no one wants, Tom, and I think on this Republicans and Democrats agree, we don't want to shut the economy down again. That that had all kinds of terrible and ancillary um side effects that that nobody wants. So if masks in schools helps us to keep the economy going, I think most parents are willing to do it. All right. We will leave it there. I'm Tom Bevin, co-founder and president of Real Clear Politics. And I'm Carl Cannon, Washington Bureau Chief. And this has been the Real Clear Politics Takeaway for Thursday, August 26, 2021. Join us tomorrow for our audio-only podcast, which is at greater length, and we will discuss Afghanistan. Mm-hmm.